This is the Neo Books call for Monday, February 19th, 2024. Uh, I should probably do the transcript before I do the call that the way Pete does. That'll save me from the janky moments there where I do that after. <clears throat> um, great to have you all here. Uh, Pete and I had a conversation on Friday where we got into sort of what, like, are we a publishing house or not or whatever else? And I, I want to report back on what we kind of discovered in some sense, because it affects how we do things here in, in Neo Books. And I'm probably going to forget half of what we came up with. So Pete, I'm going to ask if you will like uh, help complete the things that I screw up along the way. Um, but part of our conversation was about how do we, uh, in response to our, our conversation last week about, hey, let's just get busy and like publish a book. And uh, Pete has had a, a longstanding question about, wow, St I have three Stacys now. On, I think, I think <laughs> Stacy, I think you're having trouble with your phone or your laptop or whatever. Um, it will work out, but you're just multiplying on us. It's good. Um, you never have enough Stacys. That's right. That's how it goes. Um, there we go. Yay. Um, but Pete has been raising the question of, of like, hey, are we a publisher or what are we here? And being becoming a publisher of books means a whole bunch of things, um, including, one would hope, having the resources to actually edit properly, uh, standing behind the books that are published and creating an imprint of sorts with some character or some nature to it uh, or whatever else. And um, and all of that is kind of beyond the resources that we have right now. And there's other things that we can do that that we're actually maybe more focused on or that are more more important to us. Most notably, um, if this is if neo books are if the book part of neo books is meant to be the attractor, the thing that makes people understand, oh, there's a book here, but maybe there's more. The part that we're really really interested in is the more part is how do we get people to interact with the ideas inside of books and how do you know and, and how do we make that uh, a fulfilling and useful experience that may even affect industries and, and do other kinds of things um, so i think the place we wound up with is that um, we can help people publish books by diying it meaning help steer them toward lulu press and through a process of uh, inputting their own their manuscripts in and, and so forth um, um, or also we can recommend that people find some partner that has a, 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 an imprint, a, a small press or whoever else, who uh, is willing to pick up a manuscript and go uh, go further with it toward uh, having the book show up. Uh, but that we don't have the resources to be Neo Books uh, Publishing, comma, Inc. or anything that would smell like that. Uh, and that that's that's kind of off center for the, the thing that we're aiming at. Um, uh, and Rick and Dave kind of came in in the middle of what I just said, uh, Rick at the end, I guess. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll repeat it. Um, Rick and Dave, uh, Pete and I had a conversation on Friday where we were being realistic about what we can do as a publishing house. Are, are we a publishing house, Neo Books? Because we want to publish Neo Books. That's one of, the, one of our goals. And where we ended up with is we we are likely overstretching ourselves to think that we're a publishing house. What we can do is map a course to DIY it, which is probably the route I will take, which is take pieces of a manuscript, roll them up, churn them out, uh, and, and put them into the Lulu Press or Kindle Direct uh, Publishing KDP uh, engines that then have your book turn out uh, at least uh, as an ebook and maybe even as a physical book in different places. But that otherwise we don't have the resources to be a, an imprint to basically uh, steward and edit, properly edit, properly uh, form up uh, book books. Uh, I'll just say that since you, you, it's sometimes you have to form a backronym once you get new new variants and new versions. Like Coke, Coke Classic was only named Coke Classic after there were too many flavors of Coke to, to track and you had to say, no, 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 the original one, the one with like actual sugar in it. Um, so Pete, what have I forgotten from our conversation? Probably lots. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, let me give a different take on it. Okay. Um, uh, so, um, 
so for me, I, I guess uh, in, in a way, Jerry, you're, you're kind of the champion for new books. Uh, so ultimately uh, what you say about new books is going to be true. <laughs> Uh, and if we want that to change, then um, uh, we may have to lobby you or, or help you or something like that. Um, but uh, for me, there's two different things that new books might be. One of them, I wouldn't say a publishing house, I would say a publishing press for some reason. One of them is that it's a publisher, a publishing press. Um, another one might be that it's a process. Um, so then the new books project might be both actually. The Neobooks project might be a press. Um, it might be a project that is documenting um, what a neobook is, how it works, the idea of nuggetization and things like that, um, the, some tips and tricks and, and process stuff for publishing a book. Um, I think it could be either one of those or both. Um, it's interesting to hear you say that we can't do you know, X, Y, Z, because we don't have the resources for it. Um, I look at it a different way. Uh, if we wanted to be a press and we don't have enough resources for, you know, editorial work or something like that, then it's like, well, the press figures out how to get those editorial resources or how to emulate, you know, or, or fake it until we make it or whatever, right? Maybe we maybe we're over concerned about editorial process and we should just publish the books anyway, see what happens. So I, I don't think of it in terms of we, we don't have the resources for X, Y, Z. Um, I do think that we have a identity crisis about what we are and what we want to accomplish. Um, so so uh, maybe we're oppressed, maybe we're not. If we're not oppressed, then obviously you want to connect the neobooks process to the act of publishing. Um, and for neobooks, publishing means uh, getting it out there. It doesn't mean necessarily just a book. It means, you know, making a wiki. Maybe it means making a, a chatbot. Maybe it means, you know, uh, setting up a setting up a, a discourse forum or something like that. Um, anyway. Uh, if there is publishing to be done, and you would think that the, you know, as the pig travels through the Python, it's going to need to get published at some point whatever that means in, in neobook terms. Um, if neobooks doesn't have a publishing arm, then it should figure out how to help people either self-publish or help connect people to publishers or whatever, right? Um, I don't, in, in my observation, there's nothing that uh, a couple individuals can't do in the publishing realm, um, except maybe marketing. So, you know, if people want a paper book, that's pretty easy to do. If people want an ebook, that's pretty easy to do. If people want a website, that's pretty easy to do. Um, if people want a discussion forum, that's pretty easy to do. Um, the thing that I observe that is hard is distribution, what I'll call distribution. And I also mean marketing in there. Um, how do you get 10,000 people engaged with your uh, information? How do you get 100,000 people engaged with your information? That's a secret black box, which I don't think many people have cracked. Um, even the big publishers who can do that, they can do that in onesie twosies for particular authors. They can't do it for all of the authors in their stable. So that's a, a, a different nut. Um, but uh, I, the way I see it is maybe if Neobooks isn't a publisher, we want to help people become their own publishers. Um, and probably you want to have more than one person doing that. I think uh, like all six or eight of us here, self-publishing a book is less efficient than having one or two presses where four of us get together and publish you know, four books or eight books or something like that. Um, so, uh, so then I think maybe Neobooks, if Neobooks is just the project of, you know, how do we produce Neobooks in the scope of that is um, let's also set up ways for publishers to get instantiated and publishers to get, you know, public, existing publishers to get listed. Um, and so part of Neobooks's projects for MET, even if it's not a publisher, is to help the publishing process with different presses. So, so, so back to the presenting question, is Neobooks a press? Is it a project documenting the, the process of Neobooking? 
And I, I think what I heard you say is it's probably not going to be a press. Um, all of which has likely raised a bunch of questions. So please ask away. <laughs> Sorry to join late. Um, I was out for a bike ride and 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 I miscalculated the wind. It's really a bitch getting back. <laughs> Glad you're here. <laughs> Me too. Um, I I don't have as many questions as I have. Um, well, maybe I have two questions, but they're 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 um, they're they don't expect an answer. You know, defining the term publisher defining what a neo book is i so somehow hearing you talk pete um you made it to me it was complexified by your conversation i i see it as a lot simpler okay and, and here's the way i see it and what i came away from last week's conversation with um so in some ways, we're curators of content, meaning somebody comes with a body, a body, a, a body of content, and we kind of, through some editorial process, decide if this is worth messing with. Okay, um, and then we get it up in some vehicle, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm far from the technologist. We, we, we get it up there as a starting point, and then. Through technology, we kind of mess with it in different ways. Um, we talked about, you know, you know, breaking it up into 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 little pieces, and also give people the ability to comment on it. Um, I assume, in one form or another, that is um, that's doable. At least that's what I that's what I've heard um, in the technology conversations. In terms of publishing, you know, if anybody wants a, a copy, you know, have a have a hard copy of their book, um, yeah, there's lots of self-publishing houses out there that we could affiliate with in some ways, um, and 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 so the, I I think the real the real piece is is um, critical piece is identity, and by that I mean um how we position OGM um as someone who is putting out really leading slash bleeding edge content in some ways um so that's my two cents at this point in time after listening to uh you speak Pete and however the conversation started mm -hmm. thanks Stuart uh, Pete, go ahead. Um, thanks, Stuart, and I apologize for complexifying things. It comes down for me to, is there some entity responsible for content or not? Um, and I think, uh, I think OGM or NeoBooks is not set up to be responsible for content. And, and I think we're not all on the same page with that. Like maybe we should be or something like that, but I don't see it, uh, I, I don't see it having that, the, the structure for that. So, so then the question, you know, for the folks here who want to publish stuff, publish whatever that means in Neobix terms, it's like, how do we either create uh, a set of create an organization maybe which might be one or two people I don't mean something big by organization how do we create an organization that is going to be responsible for content um, or failing that find an organization that assumes responsibility for content um, yeah um, before say, I go, say, oh, uh, go ahead ask a question no, Pete, when you say responsible for content, I assume that you mean um, some kind of editorial function, decision making about, you know, is this quote, you know, worthy or not worthy for, for 
being a neo book in terms of the identity we want to create in the world. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So, for, so for me, for instance, new book is a aspirational description of how content works and it has no responsibility for any kind of content. Not that I, you know, I would love it if it did, but it, I don't think it does. Um, and then scrolling back just a tiny bit for what Pete was saying, Pete, and this is something we talked about on previous calls, Pete has been part of two actual successful book publishings. Uh, one is an edited volume uh, sort of uh, created and stewarded by Cindy Kuhn, which turned into a softbound book you can go purchase on Amazon today. The other is through uh, his work with Jordan Sukut, uh, who, uh, with whom he uh, figured out how to use Lulu and I think KDP. And then Jordan surprised him by pushing the button and actually, make, you know, producing producing the book because uh, they were kind of on the on the edge and and didn't do it when they were um, conspiring together. But there are books that have been produced. So so I think that the simplification Pete just offered and the question you just asked Stuart about is there an entity that can say is this a book and will we stand behind this book is probably the missing the missing piece here. The other moving parts are they're all doable and aren't uh, aren't these days a huge lift as you just said yeah so so just by way of my my own personal experience okay i've served on editorial boards in the american bar association in terms of making assessments about whether certain things are they want to publish them um and i don't know i don't i don't see that as a big deal i've also you know published with a quote real pub real you know, publisher, and I've self-published, and I've done multi-author books, uh, edited and curated. So I, I've got a pretty broad experience, and I don't see where editorial is. Um, is it's, that it is not hard at all? Yeah, but it requires somebody to say, you know, uh, here's the name of the publishing press, and. I get to decide or we get to decide, to decide whether or not it's in or it's out. Yeah. And as far as I can tell, Neobooks does not have that function and OGM does not have that function and, and won't, won't. Why do you say that, Pete? Why do, why do you say won't? Um, uh, historically, uh, OGM and you know, Neobooks, it, uh, the project writ, writ small, it, it hasn't done it yet, right? Um, and um, I mean, it's possible that it will, but it, it, it hasn't. Uh, and I, as you say, it's easy to have an edi editorial board function. For me, whether it is an editorial board or not is, is actually not so much of a question. When I heard about Neobooks, what, what resonated for me was this idea that it's a platform, not a gatekeeper. Um, and so the idea that it's a platform that I can participate as a member um, and and I can get other members to support me on it. And as we come together, if it works, you know, maybe I'm a lone wolf and I do it by myself, fine. And I do what I can and I get done what I can get done. Maybe I can get a bunch of people around on the project and a whole bunch of people participate. And that's even better because the quality will improve and all of those other things. But I don't think that it's one or the other. I don't think that somebody should decide whether my code, and I'm, I'm just going to go to GitHub mentality for a second. And it's like, no, you can't write that piece of code. Well, screw you. Why can't I write that piece of code? I want to write that piece of code. Now, if somebody goes and forks it, that's because they, they think it's good. And if nobody does, then they think it's bad. And that's good. That's the way it should be. But I think once you have a group of people deciding whether what I wrote is good or bad, then that that we're taking it down a path that I personally didn't think that that's where we were going. Um, as for, as for you, building a platform that does that, from a system structure perspective, from a communal perspective, rather than a top-down perspective. 
In other words, the fact that people do get to participate and do get to, um, you know, say, hey, I really like what you did. Let me contribute to that or let me use that or let me help you with that. Um, then I think that that's the process we want to see, which gives us the legitimacy and or the the backup that we would seek from an editorial board. Um, thanks for that. I say that that's I think clarifying to me. And I think I think part of what's been happening is when you say, are we a press or an imprint or a publisher? All the baggage of each of those kinds of entities that are quite related shows up, and then it's like, ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. A lot back of back to linguistics whatever. again. Exactly, and part of what we're doing, I think, is deconstructing. That's a bunch of roles and tasks. Some of which we're actually happily doing. Others of which we're, you know, you're. It's DIY. But uh, what you, the way you just put it was clarifying for me. Um, Rick, then Klaus. Yeah, maybe just a. Build on what you just said. I, I tend to agree. With you. If, if it's done the spirit of open innovation, <clears throat> then you don't have to be worried about whether you're a book publisher. If you think about it as a digital platform, a collaborative digital platform, where people can come and share their content, whether it's formally published or not, uh, it, to me, the, you have to think what's the ultimate outcome <clears throat> and of what you're trying to achieve here. And I think we we focus too much on content curation, which is important. Uh, we have more than enough content. We have more than enough of this stuff. The question is, what sort of learning communities are we trying to create? And I'll, I'll, I'll mention David's work with GRC as an example. You know, he's got this community out there. And <clears throat> one of the things that I think is that we don't, and, and this is where, uh, you know, I'd be very interested in Pizza React. What is the best collaborative digital platform there that enables us to be able to create not a static book, but a living book, something where people are constantly, it's, 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 it's based upon the notion of process innovation, where you're constantly trying to improve what you're doing, different angles, it's organic, it's emergent. And at the end of the day, a book is only as good as the number of people who read it, if they do read it. And you should be having the, the marketing mindset is how are you going to create a learning community so that they access some essential content, but more importantly, how do they have a process for actually doing something with it? That's what I'm interested in. Um, and, uh, you know, I think what David's work has, he's got the infrastructure for it, but I don't think that's what it's doing. Um, and not only that, I would argue that this should be out there, open. It should be available. It shouldn't be on a Slack channel we have to subscribe to. And, you know, it, you know, even with, uh, you know, the, the I can't keep up with all the emails that go through or, uh, the, it, you know, that's sent out to, with open book mindset. I, I, you know, periodically jump in and miss stuff and whatever. And if there was some sort of platform where it was curated. So if I wanted to go in there and say, I want to say what's anybody's done on this. And I want to get that, in, you know, you know, have a tool that could, you know, scan all that incredible information that's shared on emails but, you know, it, it, it's not accessed very well. So anyway, um, that's what I'm looking for. Thanks, Rick. That resonates really well with what I'm looking for as well. Thank you. Um, Klaus. Yeah, we've been trying to get rid of emails several times, and somehow it never really worked. <laughs> We're defaulting back to, to sending emails. But my, my, my sense was that uh, creating a platform that provides uh, access uh, to to these uh, neo books and allows uh, people to engage with the material it takes it takes uh, care of content creation right I mean if you write something that someone finds uh, uh, is just wrong or needs to needs to have some sort of a correction that will happen there uh, and so so I don't know that we need to curate this so that we need to have like an editorial board you know, because the interaction with with the material will will sort that um, but we could have a really creative platform you know, that provides uh, I mean first of all the disclaimer you know, we don't uh, take responsibility for any of these uh, contents here please engage with the material if there's something objectionable please state so you know, you can you can do that as an entry but then we can create subchapters, you know, and, and every new book has a different way to 
present itself. You can add a chatbot to one if you want to. You can make the information interactive, you know, allow queries. So, so I thought that would be an opportunity to really showcase the creativity within the group, you know, to, to have multiple topics and so on. Um, I, I love that and agree, Klaus. And also the conversation that Pete and I, or that I tried to take us into a couple of weeks ago about uh, how, what is the taxonomy of ways of, of contributing, communicating, which sort of didn't really work here, was an attempt to say, how do we simplify, but make really powerful the kinds of interactions you were just describing? How do we make it uh, really uh, easy for people to contribute, collaborate, comment, do whatever else without overwhelming them with way too many platforms, too many tools, too many things to understand. Uh, and, and that we still kind of have to do a little, a little work on that. Um, Jose Pete Stewart. Yeah, uh, just as we're talking, it, it's occurring to me that um, I think the the brand we'd want to use, if, assuming NeoBooks is the brand, um, would be one of a new way of doing it, not one of an authority who's doing the publishing. And so a book that gets printed with a neo book description, something that says, this is what a neo book, this is how it works. This is how you can interact with it. This is how you can play. Um, and this is how it was different in its creation. Um, that is to me the, the imprint that I'd want. Um, because then it it's talking about a platform change uh, a way, a new way of seeing the distribution of information in print and or other means um, as the unique part, not that there is yet another publishing house or another imprint. Like that, that to me is not at all valuable, but the value that's brought to the table by this new invention, uh, I think change, helps to change the way we interact helps to change the way we actually uh, work with one another. So that that to me would be the value. Thank you. So it seems like using the words press or imprint doesn't help us here at all. And we need to reconceive whether this is a process or a project or whatever else, but a platform, but a platform, but I, I agree with a everything. Platform, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Pete then Stewart. Um, I apologize. Uh, for using big sounding words uh, that apparently didn't mean what um, uh, or didn't convey what I, I meant. Um, I'm all about collaborative collaborative distribution, uh, collective knowledge. Um, that's what I build. That's what I do. Um, uh, so it sounds like NeoBooks is a platform. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Where is the platform? Um, are we happy with with what it is now, how will we make it better? Mm -hmm. Yep. And and it seems that making those things explicit, like what does it mean to be a neo book? Um, I, I'm happy to work on that because that's central to I think this whole project. But we need to publish those things as blog page, blog posts, whatever. But we need to get that out there so that somebody can walk in and go, oh, okay, this is what's different about a neo book and why I would like to be part of this community. And I I, I mean, especially one of those questions very literally, not, not as a uh, rhetorical question or anything. Where is our platform and are we happy with it? Um, right. Because I think we've, what we've talked through is the platforming parts of this, whatever it is, are not the hard thing. <laughs> so... Do we have a platform? Where is it? How are we going to make it better? And my quick answer to that is by default, at least for me, the platform right now is massive wiki. Well, and, and more specifically, it's uh, the OGM wiki and right. some part of the OGM wiki. Correct. So, um, so let's put more, more of our work there. Let's collectively think there more. Cool. And, uh, Pete, and if we're not happy with that, let's, you know, make it, make ourselves, make it better to where we're happy with them. 
and Pete and Jordan and I are in a conversation to take uh, uh, some few remaining funds uh, that I got a couple of years ago to fund some improvements to Massive Wiki that would help solve some of the, a few, a little, a, a couple pieces of those questions. Uh, Stuart, please. Yeah, just a few, um, a few thoughts. So there's a word, there's a way in which Marshall McLuhan's words come to me. You know, the medium is the message. Um, yeah. And the word, you know, evolution or emergence um, of both um, content and the platform, okay? Evolution of the platform. In other words, we, we are not static. We are, you know, um, yeah. Um, I blanched a little bit when 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 Klaus said um, no no editorial content anyone can come and play I I I I don't know I I'm I don't know about that okay I think we need some kind of filter otherwise I'm just concerned with what we might get um, you know I mean I'll give a you know glaring example I don't want you know. I wouldn't like to be affiliated with someone who is publishing Nazi propaganda. Um, sorry to any apologies to any <laughs> Nazi leading folks on the call, but that's the kind of thing that pops up in 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 my mind. Um, that really pisses me off, Stuart. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice. well, and there was a, the end of neo books <laughs> no no that's a legal mind speaking that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> at least a legal mind in recovery <laughs> i once tried to say that i was recovered and got 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 booed down <laughs> yeah. if if i may interject just with that on Stuart, um, Go for I think my my sense would be that what we need to do is set up a, a platform that does that, but yeah, not exactly. by making decisions after the fact. But but that the platform itself um, has you know the second I create something that isn't you know the tiniest little thing that isn't in keeping with the spirit of what we're doing. Then that gets questioned, not that that at the end of it somebody goes, "We're going to editorially review what you did." Yeah, no, got it. So we we set up some criteria. So is is mm -hmm. participation our metric? Basically, my point as well. Yeah. Okay, is participation our metric? Because the thing we want is for people to engage with neobooks in this new way where we're co-thinking, um, as opposed to uh, for a publishing house, sales of a of a an artifact would be the metric. Like, ooh, we we had a bestseller. Uh, mm -hmm. Here, we actually want to have a, a, a hot com a hot community interaction that's fruitful exactly. and useful. Cool. Yeah, exactly. I, when I when I post something on LinkedIn, my newsletter, and I instantly have you know two thousand hits on it and and so many likes, I know I know I hit I hit a home run. Uh, otherwise, there's like, oh my God, I got three likes, so that didn't go so well. So you get instant feedback. But I understand what Stuart, uh, what you're saying is you want to have some kind of a filter. You know, but I think filter may also already exist by who gets to post, right? And and uh, so who has access? Sweet, um, Stuart. Then Dave. I'm done. Thank you. Ah, well, not Stuart. How about Dave? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so I guess we're kind of going back to first principles again here, right? In this conversation, um, and I would I just I was just listening to this Tyler Cohen in this um, um, podcast, and that's where the link to his goat book came up. And part of the conversation was like, what are books for? What are people doing with books? And so it was kind of interesting. So he wrote the book, and then he also put it into the bot to, mm -hmm. to discuss with. And his his one of the, I think part of his thesis was. People don't really read books. They read parts of books, they skim books. The bot allows you that more easily. You can still read the book if you want, but the bot gives really people what most people want. And what's the the service where you can pay money and you get like the fifteen minute versions of books? Uh, you know, there's so it, it feels like you know there's a yeah. whole set of things around books that that are interesting, and they're I would say user reader oriented, right? 
So if you're really doing a platform, it feels like we've got, you know, a reader orientation, which is trying to, you know, please them. You've got an author orientation. Like, I mean, I think I got interested in neobooks because I want Klaus's book to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, I want the store, the message that he's got around agriculture to get wide, out there widely. So that's kind of my interest, but I'm not particularly interested in writing a book. And then there's another category of the author. What are they doing? Do they want prominence? Do they want to get their ideas better? Do they want to make money? You know, so it's a multi-sided platform and you got to cross the incentives in a way that makes the platform successful, I think, um, is kind of how I'm you know, thinking about this. Um, and, you know, so then, uh, you, you know, Jerry, as the convener of the platform, you got to be weaving the incentive structures so that you get something that you, that you want to keep doing out of it as well, right? Um, agreed. And um, there is a, a question sort of floating in the background, which is, does chat GPT or do LLMs obsolete reading? Uh, which well, it was like Cohen was having, they were going to do a voice sample so that they, they um, the bot could do the uh, narration of the book. Right. right. So that then the audible version would also be coming from the bot. So, you know, there's going to be the bot version, the audible version, the print version. You know, you could probably do an abstract version. Yeah. You know, it's kind of all part of the same package. So so I think that what winds up starting to happen in my head here is what is the wrapper or what bunch of ideas do we want to wrap in what way so that people can get access to them? And are books too narrow for that? Because if you were to take one book and make it the corpus of a chat bot, uh, a smart, a really smart chat bot, one of these new GPTs, is that less than you could actually do if you gave it the 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 corpus of the the author's entire works or entire thinking over their lifetime and career uh and ign let's ignore the fact about how many tokens can a corpus be and all, all that, those kinds of things for right now but but um right right now what happens is a person writes several books in their lifetime perhaps and each of those books takes a different slice out of what they're thinking and sometimes one of those is termed the person's master uh, opus, uh, because that is that is like the big the big culmination of their thinking or whatever else. Magnum opus, sorry, um, their masterpiece or magnum opus. But often we take sort of different slices out of it. And why are we? Why are chats trying? Sorry, are these chats going to be functional when they're narrowly focused, and that's good? Or are we really going to want chats that just represent thinkers? Like there's a public intellectual over there, Zainab Tufeski, and she's going to have a chat bot that, with which you can ask her about anything she's covered and anything she's done. And isn't that a lot more interesting and potentially powerful than um, having a chat bot that's connected specifically to a book that she wrote? I mean, and I guess it's so my point I was trying to make is that I feel like you don't want to do this with a view from nowhere. Right. You got to do it with one of the sides of the platform. So as an author, do I want to display my corpus or not as a reader? Right. Do I want the author's corpus or not? Right. I mean, I feel like we kind of need to, you know, serve your market there. And so you can ask that question in a very clear way. You know, Klaus, right. what do you need from this kind of? And then you, Klaus has got to figure out. And then somebody's got to figure out what Klaus's readers want as well. Right. But but, I, you know, I don't I don't think we should be asking the abstraction. Let's ask mm -hmm. the concrete. And one of the second order questions that spills out of this is, oh, hey, so the chatbot said something interesting and I got a, and got a really interesting reply from somebody using the chatbot. How does that person actually improve the corpus? How does that person connect and comment or reuse or repurpose or what all the stuff about the dynamics that we're talking about when it's, there's just a chat interface? Now, I can envision a chat interface that is trying to incorporate wisdom from anybody who uses it back into the corpus and give credit and things like that. But I'm not sure that's in current designs for any of this stuff right now. Uh, but that would be kind of interesting. The other avenue is something like what I think we've been about all all along, which is like, hey, you're you're think the the thing you're talking about right now exists over at this nugget over here, and you could engage with that nugget in these ways uh, and and go crazy. But that takes you back to that thing called writing, which may or may not be obsolete, um, right? So, so there's lots of ways maybe to solve for this problem, but I like the idea of how do we improve our interactions and our co-thinking as the over as some part of the overarching umbrella here. Um, kind of all of that just kind of got me lost a bit, but um, sorry about that. 
No, that's right. It's, it's just my brain was kind of going left and you went right. And that's like, oh, ah. um, um, that's what happened to my dad one time in Africa on a train. <laughs> the train took a right turn at like 55 miles an hour overnight on a sleeper train. And there was no door in the doorway or even a rope. And he went to reach for a breath of fresh air and he went left out the door and broke five ribs in his pelvis and was found the next morning by real workers and survived to tell the story, which got more elaborate each time. There were more vultures over his head every time he told the story. <laughs> anyway, now, I, now I've probably seriously distracted you. Now you went about, backwards. Now, now yeah. I've got like... Now you have to look up no and look longer down bifurcation. Now we're, and we're... spin twice in place. Right. Um, I was looking for the definition of chatbot. That that's that's how how what a luddite I am. In some <laughs> I'm. Uh, <laughs> I, I started thinking. Well, if 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 the aim of what we're working on here is to get down to first principles, uh, in in the platform that we're talking about then maybe the way we designed a platform is through first principles. And, and so <clears throat> the first principle is, are we trying to publish authors? Are we trying to get more readers? Are we trying to, you know, what's, what's the thing we're trying to do? And my book, uh, by that I don't mean a book, um, from my perspective, um, the the aim is to get more people seeing the same thing that that there is more consistency and and the way that we tell stories the way that we see the world the way that we see what's right and wrong and more consistency and all of that so neobooks for me is a platform <clears throat> to build consistency, to build starting points and secondary and tertiary and so forth points in a, a map of our world. Is consistency the word you mean? Is it the best word for what you're trying to say? Do you mean resonance? Do you mean harmony? Do you mean uh, improvement? Do you mean... Yes. Some... Well, I, I except for maybe the last, I, I would say that it consistency and that folks um, could glom onto something that does resonate to them, but that it has never been positioned in the way that they could resonate because it's always been clouded in some other thing, either through, uh, you know, manipulation or it's in, in a deeply buried in a book and never really clear to me to understand it. You know, that there isn't an easy way to consume what could be resonant to me. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah, so this is, you know, this has become a terribly loaded word, but to to kind of um, paraphrase um, or give my own thought in terms of what we're doing, it's to um, awaken <laughs> more and more people to certain progressive ideas, um, and and those you know those words are, you know, I you know in my own work words are words are just words. It's it's it, it, oh, but there's so much more. I know, and you need to break them down in some ways to be able to um, you know articulate what what it is that you really mean, so that people understand. Um, you know, otherwise, otherwise they can be they can be tools for manipulation and argumentation. Mm -hmm. Um. So they're an extension of of the OGM calls in some ways. Yeah. You know, what we're doing is an extension of the network. It's another vehicle um, to engage more people. So mm -hmm. I think I, I think I have two little problems with the way you express this, but I'm in general agreement with you. And awaken implies other people are asleep and that you're awake and you're going to do them the favor of waking them up. And I think that's part of the talking down to people that's not working out there. Awareness the of content. Um, uh, <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm not sure awareness, well, perspective. I don't know what the right word is. I'm hunting here. But we then the other thing is, it. But then the other thing is about progressive ideas. And the, for, me, for me, the label progressivism, just like the label MAGA and the label everything else, 
are really tainted and weird and and sort of the wrong framing in different ways. And in some sense, I think what we want to do is I'm going to use another terrible word: liberate people from use from frames that are harming us as we try to puzzle through how to make a better life for lots of people. How about shit that's important for you to be aware of in the year 2024? That's great. <laughs> that see, you you you've just taken away the loaded terms and it works so much better. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And that we co-discover that. Yes. That, yeah. that that it's not us doing so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For someone else, but yeah. that that part of the process is a co-discovery process, not a, a talking to. And that's key. And and like if people are along for the discovery route, then they will appropriate the ideas and change their world in some substantive way, and then they'll stick with it over time because it makes sense and they want to do it. Um, my my change model. My amateur primitive change model for society is basically taking someone by the hand and introducing them to something cool that they should try. Um, because it's because it might actually stick and it might not, but but um not showing up and saying, oh, we just studied 500 cultures around the world and we came up with uh, 16 things that if you do these things exactly, you will have a better society. Because that's never worked. Ask Earth Island Institute and a whole bunch of other researchers and uh, attempts to do this. Uh, that doesn't it doesn't stick when you show up and say, I, "I've I've solved this problem. Just do exactly this." Um, which means this is emergent. Which means this is a series of conversations. Which means we have to express the ideas with some clarity. Um, which means we have to make our way through other people's attempts to cloak everything in mud and uh, obscurity, because that's a really viable tactic for avoiding these conversations, right? I, one of the one of the real problems out there is is what I call denial of discourse attacks, which is different different people's conscious attempts to undermine trust and discourse in the world. And Stuart, I think you're done talking, so you can put your hand down, and I'll go to Jose. So for some time, um, I've had this idea, and I just realized that maybe there is an intersection between these two ideas. Um, the idea has been that that text is actually, um, in some ways, the way that we do text today has actually increased uh, the the inability for us to have discourse because it is a um, it's a dispassionate way of communicating. I'm not looking at your face. I'm not saying words. I can write all this negative stuff really quickly, hit send, and poof, the world's got it. And uh, nobody's there to look me in the eye and go, really? Really? That's who you are? That's what you want to be? Um, and so the idea has been that what if we didn't allow for written comments, but we only allowed for... Um, spoken comments, you know, video comments. Um, and and that would be a way to do uh, dialogue. So I would make a comment. It would be a video. My face is on it. My voice is on it. I, I feel a little different about that than I do just writing sort of a nameless, faceless uh, comment somewhere on Twitter or something. Uh, and then, so then I started wondering, what if... You com combine that with um, a chat GPT uh, to actually do the work of writing things and analyzing things to turn it into uh, a neobook structure, but that, but that the creation of the content is done verbally in some way. I'm not sure that it means anything here, but it's just those two thoughts kind of collided as we were talking there. Mm -hmm. I love how you're thinking. Um, there's a difference between anonymity and pseudonymity um, and full ID. Anonymity means you can't tell who wrote anything. Pseudonymity means you don't know exactly who this is, but you know that that other post over there is the same person than this string of posts over here because they have a pseudonym that is persistent over time. And if Bill Gates wants to go post in on Reddit, he probably needs a pseudonym. Um, and but then there's, there's another piece there, which is, it's not just that it's my name or not my name. It's, it's just that, that 
impersonal text. Impersonally, cold, in, calculating, of emotionless speaking. text. Um, yes, and and so maybe maybe we should just purge all text from the world, and the world would would settle into a more peaceful zone. Should we try that? I'm not sure that that was the answer, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> just playing your argument down. Well, but I think to some degree, um, when we when we reduce the humanity in communication, we do reduce. I totally agree. But also I, I brought up the pseudonym thing because mm -hmm. when, when you can't suffer the consequences for your words, that's a problem. And, and it's way too easy to bomb, you know, bomb conversations and leave and just like, ah, that was fun. And, and we need to reduce moments where that can happen. Uh, Rick, Pete, Stewart. You're muted. Yeah, just a sort of <clears throat> potpourri of comments, really, um, you know, echoing what Stu is talking about, you know, the dark side, so to speak, of what can be written. But on the other hand, the flip side of that is having some sort of, call it what you may, credo, manifesto, whatever, what is the ethics of the, you know, organization that it's, it's you know, to help people become open-minded, truth-seeking, virtuous free thinkers to collaborate together and solve the world's problems or whatever it is. And so that if you do have your negative deviants who get under the radar screen and start uh, running afoul, there are mechanisms where you can address those issues uh, in the public forum. So you're trying to raise the, um, um, I would say, you know, we talk about civil discourse, but I also think you need to think beyond civil discourse and generative dialogue, strategic dialogue. There are some very important subtle distinctions between them, and we don't we we tend to put them all together. And I think it's important for people to learn about those distinctions. Um, the other one was the issue of a digital learning platform, which I think is a much better frame. It echoed. I put the link in there. I just did a quick search about what are the best digital learning platforms and uh, perplexity AI, and I agree with you entirely, Pete. Mighty Network sucks. It's not the platform, so we don't even need to discuss that one. Um, but I was just curious to see what would come up. And then it, it, it triggered for me a book that I remember reading, oh, maybe 10 years ago, when Michael Hyatt was at his, you know, at his uh, highest level of uh, platform marketing, digital marketing. I and mean, he was a real maverick. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but his book is now available free. I mean, what my, my recollection of that book was is that he's a marketer and he has a, you know, I don't have a marketing mindset. So, you know, having people with a marketing mindset or learning from people with a marketing mindset is critically important. And then I came from a meeting where somebody gave a pitch and the take-home message I think is very important to this group, which is you've got to co-create with your end users. So for example, if we were to take Klaus's book to, you know, and, and look at this digital, um, this wiki platform and we start practicing on it, how can we, what are people going to engage on it? And the particular message of, of this group was: don't even try and develop an app. Uh, you know, uh, just go out and do it. You have to see who your audience, is, who's going to help you co-create it. Because if you don't have people going to the platform, you're not going to you're not going to be able to develop a learning community. So, I, I will I will I'm glad that Pete's next because I'll push on him a little bit to say okay. Let's have a look at this, uh, whatever's out there, maybe experiment. I think we need some experimentation, prototype testing to see, you know, what is it? What's the experience like? Because this is all abstract in the moment. And let's let's see if we can, uh, you know, let our feet touch the ground and say, can we can we can we crawl, run or walk? Over to you, Pete. Over to you, Pete. Thanks, Rick. Um. The, the a, a blunt answer to your question. I think right now the kind of the state of the art of uh, collective knowledge uh, and I, I, it's hard to even say the word learning because it, it has a really loaded meaning right now. It means you know a, a ped pedagogical educational system. It doesn't really mean learning. Um, but anyway, uh, I kind of the best technology I know right now is uh, discourse, uh, which is a set of forums, um, and then. Uh, it's not just the technology, it's the sociology of it. Uh, so you need a facilitation team and you also need kind of an information architecture team that's helping um, keep the information kind of in shape as, as people engage with it. Um, 
uh, I'd love to be involved with something like that. Uh, the, the basics of it aren't hard. And then applying the con uh, consist consistent effort uh, to um, build it and maintain it uh, is, is the hard part. Um, to leave that topic for a bit, uh, I'd like to talk about NeoBooks um, accomplishing things, the NeoBooks project maybe accomplishing things. Um, I, in, in thinking about why I'm here, why I come to NeoBooks calls, uh, uh, originally it was to kind of explore the space of possibilities of what NeoBooks could be. Um, I think we've covered that pretty well. Um, so I, I don't have to come here anymore for that. Um, and now the thing that I'm really looking for is to help uh, the NeoBooks team or project or, or platform uh, to uh, uh, create sociological tools and technological tools that do, you know, collective learning, uh, collective engagement, um, moving ideas into the world, um, dot, 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 so that um, the world changes. Uh, so I'm really interested in seeing neobooks change the world. Um, and, and I think to do that, it needs, uh, it, it needs a way to uh, sense or sense make towards, um, towards its, um, I'm going to say goals, uh, which I'm sorry is kind of a loaded word, but towards its aims um, and, uh, and to, to understand what it's trying to accomplish and if it's accomplishing it or not. And if it's not accomplishing it, how, how to move towards accomplishing it. So I think um, uh, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the exploration of what neobooks means. Um, I appreciate philosophical discussions about how we might make neobooks better. Um, I'm kind of interested at this point in the actual nuts and bolts, uh, let's change the world somehow. Um, uh, and uh, and back to if NeoBooks is a platform, we have uh, a platform that exists. I don't think it's got very much stuff in it right now. And I don't think very much of many of us participate in that platform. So maybe a thing that we need to do is to work on that platform more, or maybe it's to spit that platform out and choose another one or something. But um, I, I, I hope that we can kind of get to where NeoBooks is setting up um, accomplishments that it wants and then a path towards those accomplishments. If Thanks. I could just quickly respond to that in, in response to Jose thing, what you were talking about, I think that the question is how can we create a blend a high learning blend, and I, I'm talking about learning in the frame of emancipation and not the traditional notion of education. You know, um, you know, the, you know, the, the, emancip yeah. the emancipation educational methodologies is something that I'm more interested in, how to help people develop their own sovereignty, understand their thinking, metacognition, yada, yada. And that, that takes time. And it takes um, community and, over time. And, and work. Um, so I yes, have a bunch of, absolutely. you know, sociological and technological tools at, at, you know, at hand kind of, um, mm -hmm. I, th I think we should start applying them. Um, we, we haven't very much. Uh, yes. Yet. Yes. I, let's do a test run with something. I mean, do, you know, I, as I say, you know, take something from Klaus, just try it out. You know, let, let's, let's start playing with the tools to see what we think about them and see if we can, uh, Stuart, thank you. I'll give you a <laughs> jazz hands, baby. Um, Stuart, then Stacy, then Klaus. Yeah, thanks, um, Pete and Rick. I I wanted to um, because because you know what we're doing is you know it's emergent, and and I I wanted to punctuate what Jose said about um, text versus um dialogue um you know the printing press was a great idea you know in the year 1200 or whatever the hell it was invented but you know maybe it's focused us um in a direction that's no longer serving 
completely, okay? In other words, it's not this or that, but there's a way that dialogue, okay, um, creates connection. Unfortunately, the media is all argutainment, so it's it, it's not a very good role model. But but real Bohemian bo Bohemian dialogue is a very very powerful tool for evolution of um, of thought, and you know whatever studies have been done, um, you know the verbal as the, the verbal aspect is a small percentage of the communication between human beings in a face to face setting. Um, um, you know, we see that here, okay? And in some ways, just that concept and the possibility of, of having real dialogue as opposed to textual exchange um, is a great learning and possibility for an evolving forum for sharing um, ideas and evolving ideas. So we're actually doing it and I just want to, um, I, I think, you know, Rick is on the right path. Let's do something and see where it goes um, and, 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 and explore. I don't think there's a downside to that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stuart. Stacey? You're muted. Oh, you're unmuted now, but we still don't hear you. Darn. Can't hear me? Yes, now it's now it's coming through. Okay. I'm just interested in knowing, just with the eight of us, the distinctions in terms of what each one of us would consider the matrix, the matrix of success, and who we're who we think of as the end users. So, like for me, it would definitely be participation. And the end user, what I would want, I'm the end user. I want to be the end user. And I'm just interested, you know, we're, I think that there would be slightly different answers for everybody. And I think that those answers and knowing what they are, are rather useful. And I echo Rick's idea of actually doing it because I think the answers to the questions that I just said, and then doing it, I think magic happens in that process is the best way to say it. <laughs> Thanks, Stacey. And anybody who wants to reply to that or with your perspective, please jump in the queue. Thank you. Um, and I'm getting some sound from, I think, your audio, Stacey, that sounds like there's a dog eating your phone or something like that. The sound's gone. Maybe there were aliens overhearing the call or something like that, but but there was some extra artifacts on on the audio coming from your phone that, that were puzzling. I was like, what is that noise? Anyway, thank you. Uh, Klaus and then me. Yeah, also to what Stacy was just saying, maybe if I explain for a moment how I look at uh, uh, my my new book, Volume Two, and and how it evolves. If I may take the screen for a moment. Um, so so here is the theory U concept of uh, leading from the future as it emerges, um, and so we are going through this process of uh, um, understanding the system that we're working within. And so, you know, I'm traveling with a, a whole group of NGOs, but now also you know, an increasing number of uh, business business groups who are who are really interested in uh, regeneration and carbon sequestration and what have you. And so, I realize uh, there are gaps, um, not because people don't know something, but because they haven't been able to put the dots together and connect information that they all have but don't understand it in a systemic context so for example my last newsletter uh, is focused on soil carbon sequestration versus soil regeneration everybody in this in this space that i'm working within my partner for example um, understands every single component of this 
what I what I am now realizing I need to I need to spend more time explaining is that yes, soil carbon sequestration is a primary driver, and that's what we're after. But you can't look at it in isolation because you can't change anything in the field unless you change everything around it, right? So to tell farmers they need to show to grow a different type of crop. That has so many implications in regard to um, where's the market, who you're going to sell this to, uh, do you have processing capacity, is there logistics capacity, um, what is the socioeconomic impact, are people going to lose their jobs when you do this, are you creating new jobs, you know, the socioeconomics of it. So the understanding the system you know, is... is um, is the is the true challenge, right? So this this entire neo book, I I realized I was stuck in the middle of this neo book because nothing was moving around me, and then you just poke, you know, one step at a time. Where are the gaps? You know, where is the gap in understanding and knowledge that the group needs to embrace uh, in order to advance? So, so right now, I mean, for example, the and, and this is getting very technical. I'm sorry, but just just to 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 explain, um, the biofuel sector has created this low carbon intensity score, um, which is a wonderful thing, but it only works in the biofuel sector, and even there, it has implications which haven't been processed because. In order to lower your carbon intensity score, you have to do stuff, you know, that alters the entire market access around you. So this kind of systems thinking has been alien. It's alien to the to to any member of Congress. People are so embedded in their self interest uh, and in their own in their own domains, they don't want to look out. You know, so we have we are in silos, and I always compare it. You know, just climb out of your silo and look over the edges and see what's going on around you. Now, so to me, that's what a neo book can do. It can advance systems thinking, you know, embed you deeper in, in, in whatever context. I mean, this can be in a social context, in a business context, in an environmental context. Just see, connect the, the dots around you. And so that's sort of, that's, that's what I'm working on, right? So this is my, the evolution of, of volume two, uh, step by step. Thanks, Klaus. And also, um, <clears throat> I love what you said a, a moment ago about when you post something on LinkedIn and it gets three uh, responses as opposed to a couple thousand, that's your feedback loop. And that makes a lot of sense. Um, Pete was saying, and many of us have been saying, okay, great. So let's let's build a platform where these things can work. What is our platform? And one of my hunches, and I'm not sure I'm just sort of saying this to stimulate the, the, the conversation, is that we will have a hard time generating a, a platform that a lot of people show up on that's really fruitful, that really is like juicy and so forth. But I'm pretty sure that there are some platforms in existence today that other people are host, hosting where this conversation is raging and some of those, and I don't know how to tell which ones, might be very amenable to us showing up and saying, hey, uh, would you like to try this experiment? How about this? How about this other way of looking at it? Uh, and pre you know, presenting ideas someplace where the conversation already is happening, because you can't always attract all the interested or relevant parties over onto your backyard. You sometimes need to play in other people's backyard. That said, um, we've already set up a Substack pub for this project. And one of our goals was to use it to sort of send out nuggets that were also living in uh, the OGM Wiki or Massive Wiki. Uh, so we've got that. Um, I put all these calls on YouTube. We've got a YouTube channel and more. So we could, in fact, Jose, record shorter personal things and, and tag them up from our individual channels, or I could re I could post them into the you know our collective channel, whatever else. And then Massive Wiki will hopefully get uh, better and bigger. Uh, Dave, I think we're testing how do we how do these interact how do these nuggets of, of ideas become more social, get more participation, get more interactive? How do they yeah. live online? Go ahead, Klaus. If I may share one more real quirky observation, and my wife loves to watch these game shows, and there is one called The Floor, and uh, they have to compete. 
about knowing social media uh, companies. So the two contestants, so these are, you know, uh, one of the- There's middle. a game show for that already? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so, so it's just, I mean, it's too much fun. Uh, you, you watch this thing and it just blows your mind. But anyway, um, so 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 here the two contestants, and there was the one was a teacher. You know, I mean, they're, they're sort of professional people, but but not academics or uh, or or people who are who are working. You know, whatever, uh, difficult to explain. Yeah, I don't want to get lost. But the 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 only two networks that neither one of them recognized was LinkedIn. And chat GPT. So they showed the they showed the icons, you know, for every one of these networks, and they click, click, click Facebook. Well, you, they knew all of them. Didn't know LinkedIn. Didn't know chat GPT. Right. So what that tells me is that that there is a hierarchy in in what people see and observe, and LinkedIn is outside that spectrum. LinkedIn is sort of a, uh, a more exclusive kind of club for for professional people and chat gpt hasn't even reached you know the 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 average person yet at all so when we are looking at who do we cater to and who do we want to to address here i think that's really important so we don't stay in our little bucket here and but instead reach out you know. If I could quick, quickly comment on what Jerry said before Pete um, speaks. Um, Jerry, I think you're talking about, um, you know, collaborators, um, which is some marketing function, but we've got to build what we have first, I think. We've got to build the Neo book concept and, and have it be uh, something that exists before we before we reach out but but the yes. reach out is real important mm -hmm. uh, agreed uh yeah. go ahead pete uh thanks i i wonder so some of us have talked about just doing something and how it might not be too hard to do something i i wonder if we can come out of this meeting or the next meeting with uh, a, a shared goal, maybe. Um, I have I have some, uh, uh, I'm gonna put this in chat, but I'm gonna read it first because it's not quite right in chat. Um, so, uh, so we could have some of us uh, create a page on the OGM Wiki in the Neobooks section. Um, that's currently the, the Neobooks platform. Um, so, you know, why don't we use our platform? Um, maybe it's the wrong platform. Maybe the, the process of trying to do that would convince us that it's the wrong platform or that it needs improvements, which would be awesome. Um, another goal might be to make a paperback or an ebook available through Lulu or KDP. I'm talking about shared goals here too. I think, um, you know, each of us is doing some of these things separately, but uh, if there's actually a new books, um, then we, we could have a shared goal of, create a page on the OGM Wiki, um, make a paper book or ebook available through Lulu or KDP. Um, uh, have uh, some of us post to the Neobooks Substack instance. Um, um, and here's another place where we have a Neobooks platform already, but we're not using it. So either we use it or maybe it's the wrong thing. And by trying to use it, we could discover that it's the wrong thing. Um, a more ambitious thing, but I think uh, the best one that I've heard so far is uh, set up a discourse instance uh, where we can start creating a discussion space for ourselves and other people we might uh, invite. And I don't mean these to be exclusionary. These are the ones that I can kind of come up off, uh, you know, top of my head. Um, I think I, I wouldn't necessarily pick any of them for this to be a shared group. But until we have some shared goals and we're achieving them, we're not, I, I don't feel like we're a group. We're like a philosophy call, which is great, but um, uh, it gets, it, it's starting to wear on me. It's getting a little tiresome. I want us to see, you know, to make, make uh, have us, I want to see fingerprints in the world from the stuff that we do. Um, so thanks. Thanks, Pete. And just briefly to elaborate on Pete's mention of discourse, one thing I didn't mention when I did mention Substack is that there used to be a discourse instance for OGM, and uh, uh, it, it, 
wasn't sort of shaping up kind of properly. So Pete freeze froze freeze dried it. Froze dried it. How do you say that? Um, froze it. And, froze it. There <laughs> we go. And, and so it's so it's it's offline at this point. But one of the considerations is to add water and reconstitute it and put it, so basically put it back online. And then part of what Pete and I are, are conspiring to fund <clears throat> is his developing a way to use discourse as if it were the chat function on a nugget in massive wiki, <clears throat> which would be a cool thing. And then we could go experiment with that for a while and see if anybody else shows up and see if that creates the engagement you want. But, but that's, I, I don't think that's a distant uh, dream. I think that would be pretty uh, executable in the in the relative near term. And what uh, and what we would learn from that is that Pete can set up Discord and it would serve as a chat. Uh, yes, and that Discord uh, can both dis be discourse, discourse. Not, discourse. A, not a yeah. Discord is entirely different. Um, discourse is more of a, a sophisticated threaded forum with a whole a whole bunch of bells and whistles. Um, We'll say then, Rick, and then we're getting close to the end of this call. Oh, on um, that note, go ahead. Go ahead, Santa. Um, so you, you introduced, thank you, Pete, because I was feeling the same way, which is, yeah, let's get going. Um, the idea of having more places, this feels dissonant to me. More things, like we could do it here and then there and then all these other things and sub stacks and more stacks. Um, to me, it's um, let's pick something. If it doesn't work, pick something else and let's try to do something. Um, so yes, let's do something to let's not multiply um, and, and learn a whole bunch of different things that we could. Totally I think agree. it dilutes our effort. That's my I point. totally agree. Um, and the other thing, Thing I was going to say is okay if I have uh, for next over the next week if I have 10 first principles I want to put into the system where do I do that so uh, right now you would either post to the substack or you would add them to the OGM wiki and or Jose, decide that neither of those is is the right thing uh, yeah. and vote with your feet to some other platform and Jose, I don't think you're set up to post to Massive Wiki or any of that, correct? Uh, I, not that I know of. I think I've been in there, but uh, if I understand, the only way I can edit Massive Wiki is either through uh, GitHub or through uh, some other tool that I do not use. Some other um, editor like like Obsidian. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I think that's part of my my issue is even if I wanted to right now, it's not, I don't see a platform that actually knows what a nugget is or, or a building block. I don't see a platform that actually knows how I can link those two things in an explicit way that says, this is a nugget that supports this, this chunk of text. Um, uh, I, uh, I'll answer that, but, but before I answer it with a techno technical um, thing, uh, I'll note that uh, Dave's got a great comment uh, in in the chat. You hear technological things from me because I'm a technolo technologist and I'm here to build stuff. I'm not here to write stuff. I don't. That's not a value judgment. It's just who I am. Um, so Dave said, uh, "Hey, instead of tech talking technology and trying platforms and crap." Um, uh, because that doesn't really matter in the end. Um, why don't we talk to customers and do something customer focused and understand to Stacy's point who our end users are? Um, that would be a great thing. Um, my suggestions were technical steps because I'm a technologist. My ask of this group is that we have some shared goal, like uh, talk to somebody who's an acquaintance about what you know about what their understanding of a book is or what their understanding of or what platforms they use to read stuff or whatever, right? I, I don't care what we do. I think I, I would like to see us do something together. Um, to your point, Jose, um, uh, Massive Wiki and Discourse are, are top tools in my toolkit and they are also excellent at nuggets um, and they do excellent linking. And so um, they're not, they're not the easiest thing to use and then they're not the hardest thing to use. And they're very capable, very practical systems. 
Um, so again, this is Pete, the technologist, uh, saying something. Um, I, that all of that doesn't matter more than end users actually reading our stuff. But we do have tools that you know are great at nuggets, and 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 need to get better. But um, they're already. Can great. you help me if I come up with ten over the next week? Can you help me? Uh, yeah. Document I, those. I love to do that. Yes. Um, I'll send you an email offline. I think our nuggets might create more engagement if we fry them twice, because I think like the single frying isn't quite creating enough crunch. Never mind. I found Sorry. out on Sandwiches food, of food History joke. that uh, uh, that if you couldn't afford the fish nuggets, uh, you could at least uh, get uh, um, pounded uh, um, pounded garbanzo beans uh, and fry those up instead of the fish. I can never remember. Is it? Hotter first or hotter second? Is it the second frying that's hotter or the first frying that's hotter? I don't actually know. I, I, having never double fried anything, I don't know whether you turn the temperature up or down. I'm going to have to go look that up now, though. No, um, you need to have two different. Oh, two different baths, two different ducks. Damn, this is really resource intensive. I thought making nuggets would be so simple. Um, Stuart, then Klaus, and then we're I, kind of out, I, out of the call. Yeah. I would I would guess it's a lower temperature second. Okay? <laughs> as a as a as someone who does play around and with food, mm -hmm. um, no, I was I was uh, looking at Rick's comment, uh, which I think is 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 wonderful, and and then um, I think we need to add to it in service of mm -hmm. and what pops up in my mind is um, addressing some of the complex challenges that we have as a species. Just, you know, everything you said, but serving that larger purpose. <laughs> and then I started laughing because what I was laughing about was that, <laughs> and that would be a wonderful definition because people who wouldn't understand it, maybe we're not that, they're not the kind of folks we want to have participating in this endeavor, but that's just my strange sense of humor. Okay. <laughs> um, just to dovetail on the last thing you said, Stuart, I'm eager to have people like Steve Bannon participate in our same medium. And I am no fan of Steve Bannon, although I respect him as an evil genius. Um, and I would want people with very different opinions to come in and play together with us somehow in a fair, fair play place. I completely understand, um, completely, because there's no forum out there where people of completely different traditional quote orientations, the way the way we you know the way the media chunks them, um, there's no place where people are talking to each other. I mean, people used to talk to each other. I think in in the U.S. Congress, um, they came up with solutions. Um, um, I wrote a piece many years ago, which got attraction in the conflict resolution uh, community. It was called Silver Foxes and the Art of Resolution. And it was about how wise people used to come together and discuss in a, in a, in a legitimate way so they could come up with solutions to solve some of the big challenges. I don't know any place where that's really going on today. So thank you for articulating that, Jerry. And then years ago, it's just really funny, just a small anecdote. My, my stepdaughter and I agreed, no Christmas presents this year, but she sent me one. She said, I just had to send it. And it is a silver fox. Nice. <laughs> and the first thing my late wife said to me, who was on the editorial board that published that article was, you're not the silver fox. You're much too young to be the silver fox. <laughs> Such sweet words. Um, Stacey, we're getting the alien artifacts from your line again. Why don't you go first real quick, and then uh, you can mute after that. Then I'll go mute. Thank you. Because with the Bannon comment, you just gave me the courage to mention a project that I had been talking to Jose about. Um, just really quickly, I thought that a possible idea for this NeoBooks group to try out is to take small bites of the 2025 conservative platform. There's many ways we could do it, whether running it through a chat GPT and taking parts out first, 
but to have different ways to have small conversations about small pieces of it. Um, anyway, I just want to say that real quick. And I want to add to that idea. Have you gone and looked at the Democratic platform for 2024 for this election cycle? Um, a friend of mine, my friend who's a little more conservative than me, pointed out that there is nothing practical in there. It is all about uh, all the cultural war issues from the liberal side only. And it, it has very little practical stuff in there. It's, it's kind of crazy. And comparing the two might be an interesting exercise, although that's larger than we can probably all bite off. But doing doing both ends of it might be really useful. Go ahead, Stacey. Yeah, I could just say, rather than compare it, I'd rather pull out all the commentary totally and build on it because then it's that Aikido move. They've put all the work into readying half the population. Let's take that momentum and make it, you know, anyway, I'm going to mute. Get it, get it <laughs> to you. first principles. Cool. Um, Klaus, then Rick. Thank you for yeah. your patience. Pete, I, I just wanted to say I'm, you know, I'm a marketing guy, and so for me, I, I, I need to put my hands on something. Is only so much abstract that I, that I can follow. So, the way I would go about this is grab a software, whether that's Wix or whatever you want to use, and then absolutely start to, to uh, uh, tooling away, or toying away, and doodling, right, and and. And put some ideas in. So I'm I'm happy to engage uh, simply from a, a marketing perspective, right? Who do we try to reach? Market segmentations, blah blah blah, and uh, and actually do something, right? You, you just have to pick whatever platform you want to work with. Let's get started, right? Because I, I I'm I'm there's nothing I can talk anymore that puts puts a picture in my head and. To understand where this would be going, and so uh, I, I would need to see something uh, on on uh, on a real canvas. The the trick is the shared part, getting getting more than one of us, and hopefully uh, uh, several of us doing that together. I I agree. Yeah, but I mean, this this is a typical design process. That's how you do design stuff. Is within you know this kind of creative uh, engagement and. It's amazingly fast. Uh, I mean, it, it's you can in an hour you can you know, set up. I mean, to do my website with my daughter it took me an hour. You know, uh, once you once you get going, mm -hmm. uh, Rick, you have the last word today. Well, it's just to build on what Klaus was just doing to go full circle to what was Pete was talking about, which is I just came from a call where I was given yet another platform to go to, so they gave me an orientation to Notion which I've never used before. So what I would uh, what I would suggest, Pete, as one small step towards a goal is for those of us who are not so experienced with it, is to give an orientation on how to use uh, discourse. So maybe that could be something that could be done next week where we could have a little demo so that we, we're all on the same page because I haven't used that one. Thanks, Good. Rick. Um, good. And I don't know that Pete has decided to reconstitute discourse yet. I don't know what that'll take. Are you, have you already done it? Are you thinking about doing it? Do you need something to tip you over, Pete? Um, I have not done it yet. And the, are, you, are you inclined the, to, the, uh, I am inclined to, but I, I need, uh, uh, I need help, uh, not so much technical, technological help, but, you know, um, uh, it's easy to set up, but it's well. Anyway, my think, my hack actually is to spend fifty bucks for the first month of a hosted discourse, um, and then uh, if we like using that, to actually set up our own discourse and you know continue from there. But um, this, by the way, is uh, I'm also got uh, Ken Homer and Hank Kuhn interested in something similar. Yes. Um, I didn't start with discourse with them and they're already talking about world cafe and, you know, stuff like that, but discourse, I think I, uh, Ken uses Kiko chat, I think for, uh, for, uh, world cafe sometimes. Um, but anyway, we will have to come back to this and elaborate. It, on it could also call. be Wix or could be massive wiki making a website or, you know, W I X Wix. Yeah. Um, 
cost a suggestion. Okay. Um, it's, it's not thanks, a everybody. Suggestion. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody. Just do it. <laughs> Whatever just, it is. Just do it. <laughs> All right.